Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Our pal, our good, our good friend, Alex Scarlatos, is back on the show today. He's not here to chat about a movie. He's not here to chat about saving another train. He's here because he is running for Congress. Welcome to the show, Alec. Thanks for having me. You know, always trying to make those uh, good transitions into something else, you know. It's crazy, man. Like, you go from hero to dancing with the stars to running for Congress. Um, you're like, Are your parents still alive? Because if so, you're like the golden boy. Uh, yeah, they are still alive, <laughs> and they're, uh, they're pretty... Uh, they're pretty happy. I mean, all of my uh, all all of my brothers have turned out pretty good. So um, I, I wouldn't say I'm their favorite, but I'm totally their favorite. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like it's <laughs> it's pretty hard to beat what you've done here. So uh, you've got to be the favorite in the family. I get it. I'm the favorite in my family, um, but I'm an only child, so it doesn't really count. You're still not the favorite. <laughs> There's no favorite. Uh, I think there is. There is. Um, I'm a bouncing baby boy. No. Also a New York Times bestselling author, but whatever. I digress. Today's about <laughs> you, Alec. What made you want to run for Congress? Um, because it's a, that's a big boy job. Uh, so it was actually, I think, about the time that our book was coming out. I think we were going to D.C. for something. Mm-hmm. And I met my uh, state senator on a plane and we started talking politics and we agreed on most everything, and he kind of encouraged me to look at politics as a way of continuing to serve or fight for what we believe in. And uh, I kind of blew him off at first, but we stayed in touch. And the more I learned about the political landscape of southwestern Oregon, the angrier I got. I mean, we're the poorest congressional district in the state. Um, things have really gone downhill ever since our Democrat incumbent took office in 1987. Yeah, man, I, I feel like that whole pacific northwest area has gone to shit um obviously we see what's going on in seattle i heard a rumor that you just got back from Chaz. is that true yeah we were in Chaz uh two days ago it's pretty it's pretty wild out there really it's crazy so what like because we don't know and we did a whole show on it called the <laughs> chasening the other day how bad is it and what's it really like there uh, well, it was a it was an experience. So we we, we walked into it because we didn't want to drive that close and risk our car getting vandalized or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But you can uh, you can smell Chaz from about two blocks away. Uh, so it's uh, yeah. you want to describe that pretty, smell? Yeah, can you describe the smell of Chaz? Loud. Mm. That's how I describe. <laughs> it stinks it. out loud. Um, yeah, it stinks out loud is what he's saying. I got it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's. It's uh, so we walked in and uh, the first thing you notice is all the uh, graffiti all over the place on their little uh, their barriers that they had set up uh, everything from, you know, F the police and all the usual stuff uh, calling for revolution and whatnot. And um, you walk in and you notice that it's really like almost half just homeless people. Mm. It just seems Mm. like the homeless people just like flocks there as a. uh, as a way to not get bothered by police or anybody else. I'm right. not sure. I mean, it's the same um, as Zuccotti Park during Occupy Wall Street. Anytime there's some kind of institution set up outside for people to live like that, of course they're going to come there because there's free shit there. Yeah. Like, I mean, why? Well, would, exactly. It, it makes sense. And there was a, I mean, it, we were only there for like 15 or 20 minutes and we saw two almost fights. One was like this organizer on a megaphone that was basically asking the people to like point out people that they deem suspicious and uh they mm-hmm. did and almost started a fight with this one guy and um i don't know how they didn't point me out because i was wearing like a nice little button up and i looked like i totally didn't belong um but hey you know um and then on the way out too there was another guy who accused someone of filming him and uh wanted to see his phone and the dude was like no and then of course they almost fought about that and there's just, you know, a lot of drug use, homelessness, and just <laughs> offensive graffiti. And it was just, it just, it really seemed like the Wild West. And it really seemed like our our potential dystopian future if we decide to uh, ban the police in yeah. cities like that. I think we should all go to Chaz dressed up in, like, squirrel costumes. 
Yeah, just hanging out and be like, oh, no, we're not. We're squirrels, dude. We live in this area. We live in those trees right over there. Yeah, that's, we're just, what, that's what we identify with. We're just hanging out. You haven't seen any, <laughs> you haven't seen any nuts around here, have you? Yeah, I, d- dude. I, so I said if they canceled <clears throat> football this year, um, like Dr. Fauci suggested two days ago, that I would go and just do live shows from Chaz, um, mm-hmm. and that would be kind of the new Drinking Bros <laughs> hub is uh, live from the center of Chaz. Um, and then just have those those people on the show all day long. Yeah. Why is the mayor championing like championing and ning ning uh, those people? <laughs> you sound like a, a fucking go kart trying to say ying 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 or a ning ning ning. <laughs> those people because he said, "Look, it's the summer of love, baby. It's Chaz. <clears throat> we're we're talking Chaz. Why doesn't he stop any of this?" Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's political. I mean, if he if he does try to stop anything, then he comes across as a Nazi. Um, and I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it's Seattle. Uh, it's very Democrat controlled. I mean, he has no real incentive to stop it because the people that are there protesting are really his voter base. What, what about the citizens who actually live there? What do they think of this? Uh, I mean, we didn't really talk to a whole lot of them. I'm not, I can't imagine they're huge fans of, uh, you know, three city blocks getting taken over and graffitied. Uh, but at the same time, it is in a very liberal area. I, they might not be totally against it either. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, which district, by the way, are you running in in uh, in Oregon? Uh, Oregon's fourth. It's uh, southwestern okay. Oregon. It's pretty much the only competitive district where Republicans stand a chance of picking up a, a seat really in the entire Pacific Northwest. Yeah, because it's, it's, you know, highly liberal up there and – how long has that seat been a Democrat? About 45 years. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it should be Republican, though. That's the shocking thing about it. They've, the incumbent, I mean, he's been in there for 33 years, and he's never really even faced a tough re-election. So uh, hopefully he's uh, going to face such a tough re-election that he loses. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's his name? Uh, his name's Peter DeFazio. He's the chairman of <laughs> transportation and infrastructure. He's got a B-ring. Yeah, he's got a he's got a bozo ring. Yeah, he's yeah. rocking a B ring. Yeah. How well? How how old was he? he he's seventy three. Seventy three years old. You're kidding. So he's really invested in the future of the community. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man. Alec, if you lose to a seventy three year old man, we're gonna have issues, my man. Imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine being a Pacific Northwest progressive and deciding that a seventy three year old white man is your best hope. For moving the ball forward. Wow. Like, can you? Are you fucking kidding me? It's crazy, man. It's it's like the people who are going to vote for Biden. Right? Yeah, he's so mm. far gone at this point. You're just voting if you hate Trump and not for the actual candidate. I saw a really good meme about this the other day. What did it say? Did was, you do? You, I, do you know if you're up? Have you seen any of the, like pre polls or any of that stuff? Oh no, we're not. We're still a little bit far away. We're trying to only do one poll, so we're probably going to do it a little bit closer to the election yeah. to see what the issues are and what people feel. I mean, I will say this, though. I mean, Peter DeFazio, he votes with AOC 96% of the time, Oof. and this district is considered even or a toss-up by almost any standard. This mm. is the closest congressional district in the country that Trump lost. <clears throat> he only lost it by about 500 votes. But, I mean, this guy votes for he votes like he's from Seattle or San Francisco or New York, and he's from rural Oregon. So, I mean, honestly, I'm shocked that this district isn't Republican already. So I, I like our odds, really. That's great, man. It would be awesome to see one of our bros just be in Congress. Yeah. I mean, we've got one in there already, Adam Kinziger. We do. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, why, not, why not add to the... But our old school homies. We've been friends with Adam oh, yeah, for yeah. a long time here. Here's, here's that meme. It says a Trump-Biden debate is going to be like watching a rap battle between a jammed printer and dial-up internet tone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait, man. I want them to debate every single night. Same. I won't watch any. If, if sports aren't going to happen, I'll just watch those guys. Two fucking one guy that's just like says whatever the fuck and another guy that has no idea where he is. Yeah. Like it's amazing. Yeah, I, it would be, be paper, pay per view. We should just, sure. yeah. yeah, we should just tell them they're running for president, but not actually let them run for president and make it a reality <laughs> TV show. We'll just watch that shit, and then we'll actually have a real election. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> Do you get to debate against your opponent? Uh yes. I, I mean, at least we should. I'm not sure what it's going to look like with the coronavirus and everything like that. I mean, right. we're pretty well opened up down here. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, who's to say what it's going to look like in two or three months? They might try to lock us down again. I don't know. 
Um, but it's going to be it's going to be fun either way. Yeah. Does he want to be locked down? I'm not sure. Uh, he he's definitely been in favor of most of the lockdowns, and he's kind of supported our governor when it comes to shutting down things. I mean, there was a restaurant here in Roseburg where I live that opened 10 days early and they got fined $14,000. And at the time there was only two coronavirus cases in the entire county and both of them were already in the hospital recovering. Wow, wow. Um, when you're doing this, like as you've gone along the, the campaign trail, is, is it like you see in the movies, are you going door to door and all that stuff? Uh, well, again, not right now, mostly because coronavirus mm, and we're still a little right. bit uh, far right. out from yeah, the election. Yeah, yeah. We've done a lot over, you know, Facebook and email and things like that. Uh, a couple Zoom meetings and things like that, too. But we're just going to have to wait and see once we get a little bit closer. I mean, things really aren't going to pick up until about August um, when it comes to actual campaigning on the day to day. Right now, we're still mostly in our kind of fundraising mode and uh, doing polls and getting signs and T-shirts and things like that made. Got it. Got it. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Dan and I were going to run for uh, the school board here mm -hmm. in uh, in New Hanover <laughs> County in North Carolina. Um, there was a wild set of circumstances. There was three pedophile cases that popped up from teachers from the schools. And our lawyer reached out to us and he said, look, look, guys, there's 26 families that are suing. Um, they're going to attach the picture of you guys in the school board to all of these pedophile cases for the next three to four years. Like. I'd highly recommend to sit this one out right now because, you know, if you make it and you win, in which they everybody thought we would, um, they're like it's going to be your picture next to these pedophile teachers for the next three to four years, and you really can't do anything about it at that point. Um, so ours was brief, but we got to we kind of got to see the ins and outs of it. Um, I would think uh, just based on there was a dude here named. Uh, Bill Rivenbark, a uh, real piece of shit guy. Um, but there's the, the Rivenbark name in this town. There's a bunch of Rivenbarks, and his, he's got a cousin named Charlie um, who's uh, on the city <laughs> council. And he, they talk about name recognition all the time. This guy was just a fucking clerk in an ABC liquor store. He has, he's dumb as shit, and he had no uh, thought or plans to be a politician and i'm sure his his cousin coaxed him into it obviously for name recognition i wonder if for you because of the name recognition that you have if that gives you a a bigger advantage heading into this especially in the time of covid when you can't go door to door and do this stuff uh yeah i mean it definitely does i mean i'm not you know running on necessarily the fact that i'm the train hero from you know back in 2015 but at the same time it definitely doesn't hurt uh we're i mean but we are doing excellent when it comes to fundraising really even across the country and i don't think we would be doing that well if um i didn't have as interesting of a story as i have so that it does help for sure yeah because you know right now when you again when you can't go out and meet people and press the flesh kiss some babies and all that <laughs> stuff like I, I would imagine it really helps and I wonder why he's still doing it. Dan talks about this all the time. That there's career politicians who are just trying to cash a paycheck. Um, mm -hmm. Like, is that part of this guy's story? Because when you're 73 years old and you've been doing it for 33 years, at that point, it's got to be a paycheck to this guy. I'm, I, yeah, I really am not even sure because he's been in Congress long enough to have retired, you know, seven or eight years ago. Yeah. And collect a full pension and then some. So I'm, I mean, I think it's really just a power trip. I mean, I think most of the guys on really both sides of the aisle, a lot of them have very large egos. Mm -hmm. And now I think he's been sticking around for this chairmanship uh, that he now has. And so now that he's chair, I don't think he wants to retire. Um, I don't think it's even about the money at this point. Um, but, I, yeah, I just really don't understand it because, I mean, you're only a – <laughs> He should be retiring. He's in the twilight years of his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would, I would take the time off and you know spend it with my wife or family or whatever, and right off into the sunset. I wouldn't. I mean, I think politics is a disgusting business. Frankly, I wouldn't want to make a career out of it. Uh, so, what, what would be your goal then? I guess um, you know a couple terms. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see term limits in some capacity, maybe even like the military, maybe, 
you're only allowed to do 12 years in Congress and then you're out yeah. or you can do 12 years in Congress, but then move on to the Senate or run for president or something else. But I mean, 33 years for an incumbent is far too long. I'm only I'm really running because, like I said, this is the poorest district in Oregon. Mm -hmm. The timber industry went away. We have massive forest fires every year. We're not managing our forests properly. Our economy has gone hill, downhill because of it. And county government is very unique to Oregon. We actually get a lot of our tax revenue from the harvest of timber. And so since the timber industry has gone away, even county governments are seeing a significant drop in tax revenue. So it, I'm really running to solve that problem. Of course, you know, fight for the issues that I believe in as well. Um, but that's kind of my pet issue and what got me involved in the first place. And if I could move the needle significantly on that one issue, I think I would probably leave politics completely and be happy with what I've done. So no thought at running for Senate or governor or, or potentially president someday? <laughs> I mean, uh, if if we can win this race and I can actually get a lot done, we'll see about it. But um, I, I, this is as far as i've thought it out i mean i just want to i just want to get elected to congress do something about the timber issue and then maybe like you uh, maybe like i just said i mean moving up or out i would either want to move up to the senate and maybe try to get something bigger accomplished or i'd probably <clears throat> just get out and let somebody else have their turn man how wild would it be if you got in and you got to sit in and see and be a part of that i, I just it's hard to wrap your mind around when you talk about it out loud because it seems like you're close but imagine walking in and seeing everything you see on like CNN and Fox News and C-SPAN all the time where you're just like, holy shit, our buddy's actually voting on that. Like he's actually going to make a difference in this. Well, we stand a really good chance. I mean, we're probably one of two districts on the entire West Coast that the Republicans have a good chance of picking up. I think we're going to be definitely one of the top 10 races in the country. Um so it's it's definitely a real possibility. And we've met with a bunch of congressmen and senators. Uh, we're actually endorsed by Dan Crenshaw and uh, Ted Cruz and Tom Cotton. So I've, I've met I've met with a lot of them already. And um, it's definitely an interesting business. That's for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting strange. to me that this uh, DeFazio cat has been in Congress for 33 years and he sponsored two bills, two yeah. What were the two bills? You know? The first one is uh, to make college textbooks cheaper. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Which is <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, noble. I, you know, I, guess I, I remember paying three, four hundred bucks for my college books every, yeah. every semester. The second one is to do away with selective service. So 18 year old males no longer have to register for selective service for the draft. Essentially, he wanted okay. to do away with registering for that. I don't know what the point of that was, to be honest. You know, it, probably it's just some, like, just, political statement. Yeah, probably just to put a bill up and say, "All right, cool, I've yeah. done two. Yeah, he's done two in thirty-three years. So he's look. The the funniest thing about all this shit that's going on in politics recently, especially I'm not a Republican by any stretch of the imagination. Our audience knows that. I don't give two fucks about political parties, but uh, these old Democrats saying, like, we've got to get back in there and fix the government, bitch. Joe Biden, you've been in government for 40 goddamn years. 47, yeah. Dude, you, you've you had plenty of time to fix shit. You didn't fix shit. Yeah. So get the fuck out. You voted for the crime bill, by the way. Congratulations on putting 3 million black dudes in jail. Yeah. Good job, buddy. <laughs> uh, but if you don't vote for him, you're not black, so you got to be careful with that. Yeah. It's, it's strange to see what Biden's been saying these days where you're just like, hey, man, you should probably not come out of the basement. Um where he's yeah, hiding. it's stra it's strange to see Biden saying anything, and I honestly think <clears throat> that his campaign strategy is just going to be, at least from his consultant's point of view, they're just going to keep him in the basement as much as possible, yeah. so that every vote he gets is just going to be an anti-Trump vote. Because really, the people that are going to be voting for Joe Biden aren't excited about Joe Biden; they just don't like Trump. But the second you put him out there and he starts debating Trump, and people realize that he's going senile, I mean. Then you have some real problems on your hand if you're on Joe Biden's team. <clears throat> Behind the scenes with the people you've met with and talked to, have they said what's really wrong with him? Is, is it dementia? I mean, I don't really know anybody beside, behind the scenes on Biden's team. But uh, I mean, well, I, like, Ted, like Ted Cruz is in the know about everything, I feel like. Um, I, that guy lives and breathes politics and is there every day. And, you know, uh, he's always good for a sound bite whether you like him or not. But uh, I would figure someone like him behind the scenes, like they know 
Hey, man, here's what this guy, here's what's really going on with him. Well, I mean, I, I don't really know that, but I think everybody knows that there's something going on, and that's why I think they're just going to try to keep him in the basement as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he was my candidate, I would not want him out in the public view at all. I would just be happy with the anti-Trump votes that he's going to get. True. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> have you met Trump, by the way? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, super cool story. Um, after the terrorist attack, we met with President Obama, and he was actually a super nice guy, mm-hmm. no matter what you think of his politics. Uh, but then after the movie came out, we got an invite from the White House to watch our movie with President Trump. No way. And we did. And it was, yeah, he, he, I mean, he's, he was awake the entire time. So uh, Was he just drinking? Least... He, he's just pounding Diet Cokes. He drinks 12 Diet Cokes a day. Yeah, because he, oh, he, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't drink any alcohol or beer, right? No. He's, he's tweaking on that fucking... Di- that diet caffeine, coke, yeah. I yeah, guess yeah. I don't know. I don't know what he's. You need on. something. Um, how how <laughs> was, was that? Yeah, it was it was super cool, honestly. Um, just being able to like, I mean, so we'd seen the movie, you know, four or five times already at that point. So I was just really like watching him the whole time. Like, what does he think? Like, there's kind of a boring section of the movie, and I was like, I, I hope he, I hope he still likes it, you know. And <laughs> then of course the uh, the the, ter- uh, the train attack scene came around and. You know, who's like he just looked over and was like good job good job thanks <laughs> it was it was super cool though <clears throat> like what what are you supposed to say uh, that could that could have gone wrong because he's kind of uh whatever you think about trump he's been rich a very long time yeah and i feel like it could have turned into a situation where he's like can you guys just reenact what happened here for him you're like god damn it dude i don't want to <laughs> do it. but he's the president you kind of got to do it you got to do it like what are you going to do if the president asks then you, you pull know, out you a knife and stab your buddy i mean shit <laughs> <laughs> but hey you know sometimes you got to stab your buddy yeah that's if, just how if it the is. president asks you do it you do yeah. it um yeah i've met him I, the best description of him is like he's the best dad like the funnest dad at father's weekend at a college mm-hmm. where it's just like he'll pay for you the, guys want to go out for mexican food exactly Hell yeah we're going it's all on his card <laughs> yeah. he'll pay for the thing he's got a ton of cool stories and uh yeah speaking i don't of, the public doesn't get to see that side of him though speaking of presidents have you seen that i, I don't i'm sure alec because you follow china uh he's been very critical of china's bullshit mm-hmm. over the past couple of years I assume that you've uh, heard about the Indian-China border bullshit that's going on. Um, now the Indian population is using uh, memes of Winnie the Pooh to to, tro- <laughs> to troll the president of China because he looks like oh, Winnie yeah, the Pooh. yeah, yeah, And he's apparently super butthurt about it. <laughs> that makes me – I love that. Well, you know why he's butthurt? If, if they have, he looks like Winnie the Pooh is Right, why. but they've outlawed it in China. So you're not allowed to put uh, President Z or however yeah, you pronounce yeah. it um, <clears throat> on a Winnie the Pooh anything. He's banned that completely across the board. So, which of course just makes it worse. Oh yeah, yeah. that never like that it, never so. works. Why in the fuck do they think? Why does anybody ever think that banning shit like that's going to work? The only option you really have is to lean into it. Like you know what I do? Like show up to the press conference tomorrow dressed like Winnie the Pooh with no pants on, red yeah. sh- red shirt, no pants. No pants. You're good like, to go. Well, you call me Winnie the Pooh? Here I am, motherfucker. <laughs> that's what I would do. But I'm not uh, the president of a goddamn country, and that's probably why. Yeah, cut a small hole in the wall and a pot of honey on the other side, and let him get stuck. You know, let him get stuck. Mm. That'd be the ultimate. We may have gone too far. Uh, I don't think we've gone far enough. Uh, Alec, you've been on the show plenty of times here. You know we got some <laughs> sponsors who actually pay for this thing to be on the air. It's, it's still shocking to us, but they do. Yeah. <laughs> First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Danthony, you got the shirt on today. I do, yeah. I'm a big fan of their People tees. keep telling me that this shirt looks tight on me. This is an extra large shirt. Uh, you, you, it looks, you, you just look jacked. It looks normal to you me. You just look jacked. No. Uh, 25% off everything in the entire store. Pillows, sheets, mattresses, <laughs> adjustable bases, you name it. Uh, you also get two free pillows with a mattress right now. And as always, they get a 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. I can't believe they've kept this 25% thing going. It's um, been going on for at least three and a half years because that's how long we've been doing business with them. No. I, right? They've, they've, typically, it's like 15%. But the, for oh, the yeah, the 15% I'm talking about. Yeah, but for the quarantine. Yeah, yeah, it's been um, 25. Well, it's 30 for a while, shit. Yeah, for Christmas. Yeah. Now they've been through the quarantine. They've been keeping it up. Um, they're amazing, man. It's the finest mattresses on the planet. Uh, they've always looked out for military and first responders by giving them 15% off forever. Uh, now they're just giving everybody 25% off to get through these hard times out in these streets that we're going through right now. Next up, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Have you had this yet, Alec? 
I actually have not. It's the best in the biz. Uh, here's a can of it right here. Yeah, you can so, have it. It's yours. Yeah, we'll just put it right, it, right through it the here. screen. But I'll just send it right through Zoom. <laughs> um, everybody keeps hitting this up, and they're like, dude, it must be something. Rogan keeps drinking in all of his posts. And I was yeah. like, yeah, it's the best drink on the planet. Um, we've been screaming this in your face for months and months and months. Now that Rogan's got it, you're like, oh, man, I'm, it must be rad. Go to KillCliffCBD.com, 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Uh, there is no THC in it, so you will not piss hot on a drug test out there. All of the the drinkables out there, please, please use Killcliff rather than something else because you really don't know what you're getting. Uh, you can go down to a head shop and get something from China on there, but uh, you don't know what's in that. Uh, Killcliff is is a brand you can trust. Three amazing flavors: uh, mango, grape, and orange Kush. Go to KillcliffCBD.com today. Type in the promo code Drinking Bros. Get you. Twenty uh, percent off and free shipping uh, with with the cans. That's that's a big deal, dude. Um, yeah, it is. Promo code <laughs> Drinking Bros. Twenty percent off at KillcliffCBD.com. Uh, last but not least, we've got LiquidIV.com. D'Anthony, you and I are drinking this today. I drink it every day. Every day, uh, we go Killcliff at night and then uh, Liquid IV every day. This is one of those companies where, dude, I've been drinking this for years uh, without being sponsored, and finally, I was like. Can we just do this? You guys are doing podcasts now, yeah. and I actually drink it every day. Uh, you pop open one of those tabs here. Boom. Uh, pour it right in the drink, and you're good to go. And uh, it'll rehydrate you faster. So if you drink one of these things of water with, with uh, liquid IV in it, uh, it's the same as drinking three of these waters. Um, yeah. And I'm not a, <clears throat> a big water drinker. I don't want to you know, put 5,000 gallons into my mm-hmm. body every single day. So I try to yeah. try to use this as much as I can all throughout the day. I t- no lie, I drink two of these things a day. Um, fastest rehydration you can get on the planet. Go to liquidiv.com today. Type in the promo code Drinking Bros for twenty five percent off. Um, do you watch other campaigns that are going on around the country and uh, and try to mimic some of the things they're doing? Yeah, a little bit actually. Um... So there's a guy running in Pennsylvania 17 named Sean Parnell, another really cool veteran guy. And he's uh, his campaign's about a month ahead of ours when it comes to things like, you know, fundraising and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what we try to do is um, see what he's doing. And it's it's actually kind of funny because we're kind of we're good at opposite things. So I've actually talked to him and we've uh, kind of exchange trade secrets a little bit actually uh i even got like this the shirt that i'm wearing right now is actually a it's like my little campaign shirt it's got like bets for alec on it because it's like the multi-cam undershirt yeah yeah <clears throat> and our little our, our little logo on the back we actually ripped off from him it's like the little oh, yeah. flag with the uh, state of oregon in it we actually ripped that off from his campaign too so uh, <laughs> he's, a really, he's a really good guy you, you guys should uh talk to him but between Sean Parnell and my campaign, I mean, uh, there's actually a lot of good veterans running for Congress across the country. And I think it's, especially if it's a good year for Republicans, which I think it will be, I mean, you're going to see a lot more vets in Congress. How, how is he doing in his district in Pennsylvania? Uh, he is actually doing really well. I mean, like I said, his race is probably even a little bit easier than ours his race is about a plus three republican advantage percentage on average but he's running against a democrat that has the seat right now ours is actually a perfectly even toss-up and um we're, we're both doing really well for fundraising like i said he's a little bit ahead of us but we are at i think nine hundred thousand total and five hundred thousand just for this quarter so we're it's really starting to snowball for us and uh i mean we need all the help we can get because like i said we are fighting a little bit of an uphill battle but it's definitely very doable so i mean you guys just plug sponsors so i'll plug my website yes Uh, i I, I was just gonna ask where can people (laughs) find you to donate and get one of those shirts and help out your your campaign because we really want to see you win yeah alec for oregon.com a-l-e-k-f-o-r oregon.com we also have a facebook page alex carlottis for congress uh, if you have any questions or want to volunteer or donate, we definitely appreciate the help. It's uh, need all the help we can get in this one. That's awesome. Yeah, we uh, uh, we'll be doing a live election show um, in Austin, Texas that night. Yep. 
um, <clears throat> on that, yeah on on Tuesday. So um, we'll be what going is it, the fourth. Uh, I believe it's the November third, correct? Third? Mm-hmm. Yep, November third, and uh, we'll be doing we'll be going all night for that. Uh, it'll be cool to follow along and see if you get in as we're doing it. Um, maybe you can call in live <laughs> on air. We'll be super drunk, but it would be awesome. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I, if if we win, I will. That'd be great. That'd be great. Because like I, I would say, what campaign polls probably close there around seven. So what is that? That would be nine o'clock Austin time. Yeah, yeah. I think we get we get first results at like eight, so we'll pretty much have a really good idea at eight o'clock. So mm-hmm. about ten o'clock your time. That's great. Have you? I know this is early, but have you started a a, a speech? Have you started writing one for? Uh, your potential victory? No, <laughs> no. I still, we still have so much we got to worry about between now and then. It's not even funny. Um, I'll probably write the speech like thirty minutes prior or something you, you like should, that, or just wing it. You should just quote Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> like we're assured, this is what what is best in life, and just talk about seeing your enemies driven before you and hearing the lamentations of their women and shit like that. I think that would be appropriate. <laughs> or you just give only Rambo mm-hmm. quotes yeah. throughout your entire speech. Or an interpretive dance. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you have a sign language person booked yet? Oh, no, but we'll have to get right on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, would, yeah. I would start looking today. Go to <laughs> Craigslist today and start looking. Is that where you get them, Craigslist? Uh, I'd imagine. I haven't used one yet, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> when I will, that's going to be my first, you yeah. know, Google search is obviously <laughs> Craigslist. Uh, signer, I think that's where they, they go by, right? I don't know. I'm not sure either. I don't know. I wonder how much they get paid. Uh, I'm not sure. How much do you get paid in Congress? Is it all the same or is it uh, no, is it If you're a junior no. member, it's like 135000 a year, I think. And if you're a senior no, member. No, no. It's, it's, all, it's all the same. It's like, I, think you, I think the only pay bump is uh, once you speaker. get into like the Senate. Yeah, or Speaker. The speaker I think, makes maybe, like 175 but, um, I think. Okay. Something like that. No, I, th- I think every everybody makes 174, mm. and then I think if you're speaker or something like that, maybe there's a little bump. But it's uh, it definitely pays pretty decent. But I mean, you do have to maintain <laughs> two residences and fly back and forth constantly. But yeah. uh, I mean, it's how yeah. Have you gone over the schedule? Because I wonder what that's like. Because you see, you know, the the votes in progress, and you're like, all right, great. How do they get all these people in from these states? And is that part of the budget, or does that come out of your own salary? Um, I think there is, I think it depends if you're flying back to do congressional work, mm-hmm. it will come out of your, I think it's basically a congressional slush fund that you're allowed to spend up to a certain amount of money. And I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but then if you're flying back just for personal reasons, like to go to a wedding or just see family, then it has to come out of your pocket. Gotcha. 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 <laughs> I wonder if it, it's gotta be all first class. You can't put a congressman in coach. No, right? there was after the, uh, banking crisis, mm-hmm. um, that was the last time that congressional pay was adjusted, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe it was, uh, I, I think it went up a little bit. But okay. before that, it had gone down consistently since the early 90s. Um, but there was there was something about <clears throat> any company that, like politicians and then any companies that took TARP money had to like restrict to, like, they couldn't fly first in business class all the time anymore. There's some kind of regulation about that. I don't oh, know was. man. Yeah, Flying from there Oregon was, to D.C.? Yeah, there, there was a law passed. If, if the government's paying for it, it's not allowed to be first class, yeah. period. But, of course, <laughs> most congressmen, they fly back and forth so much that they get, like, just free upgrades from yeah. their miles and things like that. Okay, yeah, because I always wondered, like, you know, you're going from Oregon to D.C. That's a long flight. And chances are oh, you yeah. probably have to stop somewhere. I don't. There's no direct flights, is there? I think there might be, but I think it's a direct flight from DC to Eugene, specifically for uh, Peter DeFazio. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Huh? That's great. I, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> man, then you know, after you beat him, you can thank him. Be like, hey, man, I needed that flight, and I appreciate you doing something other than pass two bills. Oh, well, he, he'll probably change it if I get elected. <laughs> he voted on a lot of other stuff. Like he voted on, uh, he voted to impeach Trump, for example. Did he really? But he, most, almost he, every he, Democrat did. That's not surprising. Yeah, he uh, he co-sponsored the Green New Deal with AOC, and he also co-founded the House <clears throat> Progressive Caucus with Bernie Sanders. So that's what Oof. I'm saying. This guy's not. He's not a moderate at all by any stretch of the imagination. How weird would it be, man, if you get in and you're, you know, you come out of the restroom and boom, you just walk right into AOC and her, her eyes, like just seeing those eyes for the first time, 
That'd be... It's almost surreal, I think, right? You just got to shake your keys in front of her. <laughs> is just that what it is? Like a, like a baby, just yeah. shake your keys in front of her, and she's like, oh, and she'll start swatting them around, and you just walk away. Easily distracted, yeah. 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 Or shine a laser well, on if, the ground. If I win, I'll be the uh, youngest serving congressman, so I'll beat out her for that record. So that'd be that'd be kind of fun. No I could shit. Be the re- I'll be the Republican counterpart to AOC. So That's great. How old are you? That'd be awesome. Uh, 27, but if it makes a difference, I'll be 28 by the time I'm elected. There it is. There it is. I'm only a couple <laughs> summers older. Maybe I should have done it younger. I really want to do it, by the way. Um, I w- I'm curious, after you get in, I want to know what your experiences are with it, but uh, it's something that fascinates me endlessly, where it's like, can you really get in and actually make a difference in the country, or is it, like Trump says, it's all just a swamp and you can't really get anything passed and, and all that other stuff. Like That's what I really want to know. Actually, that was one of my first questions when I met with a lot of congressmen. Uh, this is before I had even decided to run, and I was really just asking, you know, is it worth it? Like, do you feel like you can actually make a difference for the people in your district? And I'm, all of them said yes. I mean, I feel like they wouldn't be doing it if that wasn't the case. At least a lot of the ones that I talked to that were actually decent people. Um, and I mean, that's really one of the things that helped me make up my mind. And if they, I mean, I'm not sure if you can actually really affect change on the entire country, but if you can actually help the people in your district, I mean, that's really why I'm doing it to begin with. So I would be happy with that much. Yeah. I mean, you got to act locally and think globally. You know? That used to be the point of uh, the Congress to take information from your district. Here's what my people are dealing with. Mm-hmm. How can we deal with this as a government? Uh, now it's like, I believe these eight things. So I'm going to go to D.C. and push these eight things that have nothing to do with my district. It's just like virtue signaling, essentially. Right. It's nonsense. Yeah. Congress is nonsense. But I hope you get in. I hope you get in. It'd be awesome. <laughs> no, for real. Because like, I, I, I think you can change it, to be honest with you. I know uh, Dan's a, I don't. a naysayer, but uh, I, I think you can. But it takes enough people to want to do it. Um, and if it look, if you're having issues with it and you're like, dude, I really can't get anything passed and I don't feel like uh, I can ch- affect change in some way. Just promise me this. You'll try to pass some weird bill for like Bigfoot in Oregon, you know, where it's just like, hey, guys, he needs protective rights. We need to lo- start looking out for Bigfoot. I mean, it seems like they protect every other endangered species. I mean, that's one of the reasons the logging industry was shut down was a a spotted owl that turns out wasn't even being killed off by the logging industry. It was being killed off by an invasive species. And we know that now, and they still haven't adjusted the rules. So we might as well protect Bigfoot. I mean, he's probably more real than (laughs) the spotted (laughs) owl that's getting killed off by the barn owl. So I don't know. It's like the red cockaded woodpecker. If you've ever been at Fort Bragg, you know that this animal allegedly exists but no one has ever fucking seen one before like we weren't allowed to dig holes in certain places or uh, like touch or put like hang up hammocks on trees or anything like that because there might be a fucking woodpecker around here man yeah hey you know what woodpecker fuck off guy yeah you know you had your time on earth now it's my time now it's your time yeah yeah it's and i'm gonna time. cut all these trees down and you can go fucking smash your beak into something else yeah i'm sure they would take off and just go to some other they're birds trees. they can fly well, man yeah. I, I have to walk or That's- drive everywhere i go it costs money Birds can fly for free. Yeah. So whatever. Well, that's the funniest thing about it, though, is that a lot of these uh, people on the left use the environment as a way to justify what they're doing. And the shocking thing is, is by not managing the forest in a proper way, there's these massive forest fires every year. So they want to save all the trees by not cutting them down. But then instead, they allow these massive forest fires to come through. And I mean, you dump tons of carbon into the atmosphere in a forest fire, then the, tr- the forest is all dead and decomposing afterwards, which dumps even more carbon into the atmosphere. And it would literally be better for the environment to allow people to log, at least in a way that prevents forest fires than what we have now. And that's really the ironic thing about it is the environmentalists that want to stop this stuff really don't realize it'd be better for the environment if we had younger, healthier trees mm. that were being planted mm. to help you know, filter out the carbon in the atmosphere and turn it into oxygen. It's, I mean, hate to make it too serious again, but no, 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 no. I no. Really, every, what did Captain America say? Everybody, every time somebody tries to stop a war before it starts, people get hurt unnecessarily. And this is one of those examples where this, this, uh, intransigent motivation towards environmentalism. Like I, we, we're all like, we all try to be conservationists, right? 
especially people who enjoy the land and want to hunt and fish or mm -hmm. just enjoy it in a cabin or whatever the fuck. Uh, but when you become so intractable in your positions that it actually comes becomes detrimental to the cause, people just start making excuses about it. They're just like, oh, well, fucking blah, blah, blah. But I, no, you caused this problem. Right. Fuck face. Like trees are meant to get cut down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Is, is that the problem in California as well? Because there's a ton <clears throat> of wildfires in California. And I know Trump was saying there was some issue um, with uh, what, do, what do you call that department? Forestry? It, it, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, well, B, BLM, really, mm. especially here in Oregon. But uh, also in California, it also has to do with the fuel load in the forest. I mean, it does here as well. Yeah. But the, the problem is, is in order to protect these forests, a lot of environmentalists have gone so far as to say you can't do anything. You can't clear underbrush to prevent forest fires. You can't thin the trees to prevent forest fires. So then as a result, they're trying to protect the environment. They've just gone too far. And now by not touching these forests, there's too much fuel in the forest, like underbrush and dead trees and things like that, that makes it easier for the forest to catch on fire. And that's why you have these massive forest fires every summer and they're getting worse and worse. I mean, there's a reason we didn't have this problem in the 70s and 80s when we were actually out in the forest managing, managing it in a proper way and actually harvesting timber. And I mean, you, you just see that with pretty much everything these days, um, people will latch onto an issue and take it too far. I mean, even with the protests going on right now, and you know, like we just talked about the Chaz, I mean, no one was, it, no one was in favor of what happened to George Floyd, but then to take it so far as to say, we need to abolish all police. I mean, no one's in favor of that either. And we just need to work on finding more middle ground. It just seems like the United States is getting way too divided on the left and the right. And there's so much room for compromise that people just don't realize because they demonize the other side. And that's really what I'd like to work on, especially with this forestry issue, because Oregon is a primarily blue state, even if the area I represent tends to lean Republican. We need to work on compromises so that the pendulum doesn't swing too far to either side. And then we just become deaf to the concerns of the opposite side of the aisle. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all Americans. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what kind of la how you label yourself as long as you're under that flag you know we have to find some way to live together we talk about that a lot here too um i personally don't think that the the dual du dualocracy if you want to call it that like two-party system is beneficial to this country at all but it is a reality that has to be dealt with in some way mm -hmm. right yeah <clears throat> uh, is there anybody else running like on the independent ticket or is it just you two uh, there's one guy running in Green Party, um, but uh, of course, I'm hoping to get the Libertarian nomination as well because you can do that in Oregon. That's something we might actually try. Um, I, I lean more Libertarian anyway, so that's something I'd like to do personally regardless. But um, yeah, only just one Green Party guy, which is hopefully going to hurt the Democrat more than it hurts me. So I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we hopped on the show, I was talking to your campaign manager for a bit. How does that work out when you when you run for office? Do you go and hire your own campaign manager? Or does somebody look at the numbers and say, oh, this guy's running. I think this uh, this, you know, this campaign manager will be right for him. How does that work exactly? A little bit of both, actually. So um, I actually my campaign consultant actually found me and then we talked about running and decided that I was actually going to run. And he said, you know, Hey, that I think that actually his name is Ross. It is. Yeah. I talked to what him. a piece of Ross. shit. Yeah. When Jeez. we were on the phone, he goes, dude, from Ross to Ross, what's up from Ross to Ross. That's, that's a, that's a book about how to uh, be a real piece of shit. <laughs> Great guy, by well, the way. And he had a, he had a he, George, Georgia area code. Is he from Georgia? Really? Yeah. Yeah. He, his name is Ross Ferguson. He's from Georgia. He works in Tennessee primarily. But my um, it's too close. My yeah. my consultant my consultant introduced us and we started talking, <laughs> and he's a great guy. I mean, he's probably the single biggest factor in where we are now. He really turned the campaign around, so I got to give him a lot of credit too. I mean, it really takes a team. I mean, we've got like seven or eight different people that are all working on this campaign basically twenty four seven, and things haven't even really heated up yet. I mean, it really. I mean, this is more than just me. This is a whole movement of people i mean across the country and mm -hmm. in oregon so i really can't take credit for even how well we're doing it's 
Well, I don't I know. Mean, I don't. I don't know if that's true though, because I I've been talking to a lot of people lately, and uh, there is more and more appetite for people that kind of shy away from partisanship and are are truly not just outspoken about, but focused uh, policy wise on bridging gaps between uh, groups that have been divided over time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I I was talking to one of my buddies last night. He's actually <clears throat> was one of the. Uh, well, I won't say what company, but they own AS, ESPN. He was one of their major marketing heads for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And he's, uh, you know, from Texas and blah, blah, blah. So he's that kind of guy. And it's like uh, we were just talking about some of the shit that I've been doing lately. And he was like, I think there's a real appetite for people that are just – that are more interested in, in solving things than they are in fucking waving Bickering. some flag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think you openly taking that position probably helps you quite a bit. Uh, so, and, and it's not, I think, I think a lot more people feel that way, but don't know how to express it. Like, how do I say, uh, that either I don't identify with either one of these two groups. And so who do I identify with? Who do I meet up with, talk about stuff and, and, you know, make sure that we gather in a group large enough. So our voice will be heard in a real way and stuff like that is difficult because it's not something to call yourself. Right. There's no standard to fucking stand under. So I think, uh, you know, running, uh, for essentially two different parties, which is one of your plans, I guess. Um, and then, you know, being open to that kind of shit, I think that goes a long way. So, yeah, obviously this guy knows institutionally how to put your messaging out there and get you in the right spots, but it's your attitude that's going to do it at, at the end of the day. And well, I, I, mean, I, I appreciate that because there's not a lot, of, honestly, on either side of the aisle, there aren't a whole lot of people that are reasonable and willing to negotiate these days. No, that's for sure. I mean, but like I said, there is a large section in the middle that will go either way Mm -hmm. and it will just vote on the issues like you're saying and there is a ton of room for compromise i mean if we could get something passed on you know say timber for instance that appeals to the environmentalists and the economy for southwestern oregon i mean we can have both at the same time we can protect the environment and have a thriving economy but of course political partisanship is part of what scares people away i mean the you say the left you know they want to protect the environment and not hurt a single tree and that all sounds good in theory until you actually are 33 years down the road and can see the consequences but then you don't want to elect someone too far on the right because you think they're going to you know go out there and cut every single tree i mean which also isn't true but you need you need someone in the middle that can you know convince people that we can do both we can protect the environment and we can have a thriving economy yeah Yeah, man. Um, You're fighting the good fight there. How many people live in your district and how many people do you need to come out and vote? Uh, I think we're about 780,000. That's about the standard for every congressional district. It's based on population. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Democrats do have a slight registration advantage, um, but it looks like with Biden being the nominee, that it's actually going to be a little bit lower than normal. So that's going to help us out. Also, the uh, college students might not come back in November in time Ah, to vote just due to the coronavirus. So that might help us out as well. And also, I mean, the huge chunk of people in the middle, I think we're going to pick a lot of votes up in the middle and the non-affiliated voters. There's been it's basically been Peter DeFazio, who's incredibly far left versus Art Robinson, this guy who's incredibly far right for really the last 10 years. I mean, I'm definitely a fiscal conservative and probably a more libertarian leaning Republican. Uh, but we definitely plan on picking up a lot of those votes in the middle just by being that third option that people haven't seen in over 10 years. Yeah, man, that's great. I didn't even think about colleges being announced. Um, DeFazio, he got 208,710 votes in the last mm-hmm. election. Yeah. What was it, 2016? 2018. Congress oh, you got to run every two years. years. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> so he's been. Yeah, th- and the other guy. 33 years. Yeah, the other guy. Yeah, the other guy gets beat. I mean, dramatically every time, yeah. even though this district, I mean, this district almost went for Trump, like I said, closest in the country that didn't. And then it goes Republican for governor's candidates. It goes Republican for secretary of state's candidates, even presidentials from time to time. It just hasn't for Congress yet. And that's something I mean, we're hoping to change. Hopefully I'm a good candidate. We're fundraising plenty. Um, we've got great endorsements. So it's just about targeting and winning over the people in the middle. So this guy just keeps running even though he keeps losing? Art Robinson, yeah, every year since 2010. 
<laughs> so did you beat him out in the primary? Is that how you got in? Uh, no, he actually <laughs> dropped out. I think, um, I mean, he wanted to, I, he dropped out to actually run for a state Senate seat, which I think he just wanted to win one. And uh, I mean, he's not a bad guy, but he just does not win the middle at all. He's just not a very political person. Hmm. He's almost um, too honest, I think, in a lot of ways. Probably. He's a biochemist. And, um, he's a scientist. He's a He's got a PhD in biochemistry. Yeah, really? So he probably doesn't understand massaging language that much. No. He's just like, no, that's not right. What you said is stupid. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can only get away with that if you're Trump, apparently. Well, and exactly. I mean, tr- <laughs> like I said, this this almost went for Trump by 0.1%. It mm-hmm. goes for governor's candidates and secretary of state's candidates, and he loses by 15%. So I think by just not having my name be Art Robinson, I think that helps us out quite a bit too. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, I just read something uh, yesterday that Kamala Harris is actually asking for November 3rd uh, to be a national holiday so that way people can go out and vote. Have I've, you heard always, about this? I've always thought that should be the case. Yeah. Like, why every, The voting day should be a national holiday. It should be a federal holiday where everybody gets off to go vote. Why would you not do that? Yeah. I think that and opening day of Major League Baseball should both be federal uh, holidays if baseball comes back ever again well, well, we'll it'll be back eventually but whenever it is i think it should be a federal holiday <laughs> opening day of fucking baseball it's the most american thing ever and you should get a like if we're going to start subsidizing stuff give me an apple pie on opening day of yeah baseball. for free yeah. yeah i mean i can get one from mcdonald's for 99 cent how much could it possibly cost yeah you're fine jesus you're Christ. fine we spent fucking five trillion dollars on a rack i can get an apple pie are you kidding me <laughs> are you in favor of, of having uh apple november third be um a national holiday yeah i mean obviously there's a lot of people that vote already and they find a way to do it um but i think that if we could actually make it a national holiday then people wouldn't have an excuse not to and uh i mean hopefully <clears throat> that means we could get rid of you know mail-in ballots which aren't always the most reliable thing in the world so if we could actually allow people to show up and vote on one day i think that'd be great for both um making sure our elections stay secure and allowing everybody to have a voice in the process australia does it in australia they the voting day is no nobody can work first Mm -hmm. of all and secondly uh as tobias Fuque would say Mm -hmm. uh all the bars are closed (laughs) really (laughs) so they've passed a lot i don't remember how long ago it was but they like i think i think they started by making it a federal holiday Uh and then everybody just went to the bar got fucked up all day instead of going to vote they're like no you can't do that either that's really funny i think it's australia dude come on i think when the 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 booths close they should open up all the bars and then you know yeah as soon as the booths are closed, there's gonna be man the bars are gonna be crazy (laughs) actually i think you should just have to they should make you have one of those i voted stickers to get into the bar yeah because yeah. if you vote at 8 in the morning, I want to start drinking at 8.30. Exactly. Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And the first one's on them, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, I did my civic duty. Give me that booze and an apple pie right now <laughs> or else. Or else. Or else. It'll be, it's got to be pretty cool to see your, your, your name will be on the same ballot as Trump. Yeah. It's, I mean, we already had our primary, so it was uh, actually really cool to see my name on the ballot then. I mean, with our, you know, in Oregon, since we do do mail-in uh, ballots, they send you the ballot, and then they also send you a voter's guide where every candidate gets their picture and their name and, like, a description of their platform. So it was really cool to be able to do that and actually get to tell people a little bit about what I believe in before they actually cast their vote. Oof, man. Let's uh, let's test your Oregon knowledge here real quick. Wait, Art Robinson, uh, yeah. Art, Art Robinson is, uh, uh, he doesn't believe in evolution. Ah, you don't say. He he like co-authored a fucking paper about a scientific descent from Darwinism. Ah, uh, good for him. <laughs> I can't I can't believe he's never won. Uh, let's test your Oregon knowledge here real quick. Uh, what's the what's the state bird of Oregon? Do you know? Ooh, I don't know. Shout out. What's the state bird of Georgia where you're from? I don't. I don't probably know. a spotted owl. <laughs> I don't know what it is for my state. A pelican, maybe? State I, bird of South Carolina. Uh, it's so for, The Oregon state bird is a western <clears throat> meadowlark. Oh, okay. Mm, mine is a do you know what that is? Those. Yeah, I do, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. What, what, what's Georgia? I'm from Georgia. I don't know what it is. Because uh, I imagine people are going to ask you 
these things all the time, right? No, why would anybody ask that question? People, people He's running for Congress. This state, isn't fucking state Jeopardy. The state bird. No, uh, <laughs> state bird of Georgia is a brown thrasher. I don't, I've never heard of that. Or a northern bobwhite. Well, the thrasher was uh, <laughs> the hockey team for a little bit. So oh, that makes sense. I didn't think that was a real thing. I don't. I didn't know mine. It's South Carolina. It's actually the Carolina Wren, and I went to Wren High School, so that doesn't bode. <laughs> That doesn't really bode well for me, does it? <laughs> I didn't pay a whole lot of attention in high school. Uh, uh, what's What's the Oregon State motto? Ugh, I don't know that either. I don't know that. It's not one of the good ones. It's not like live motto. free or die or something. Uh, let's, yeah, what, what, what is it? Let's I feel see. like I should know this. It's, this is it's Latin. Latin. It's uh, oh, she, there, there's the problem. She yeah. flies with her own wings. Is the is the translation? That's I don't care about that. She flies with her <clears> own <throat> wings. You should uh. Yeah, the first act in Congress is to get that shit changed because that sucks. That's a, that's a weird one. What would you change it to? That sounds like a fucking... Kid en- Rock? Sounds like an Enya song. Yeah, <laughs> I, a Kid Rock song would be sweet. Yeah, make it Ba with the Ba. That's the new national... Who else is it like a big... Who's a big Oregon <laughs> band that I'm sleeping on here? An a Oregon of, band? Yeah, that I'm sleeping on. Bands from yeah, Oregon. Yeah, I don't... I don't think there's really that many, to be honest. Uh, right? I mean, well, Portland. Oregon State University marching band is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, boy. Portland's got a lot of – they've got a big music scene, right? Seattle is way better than Portland. Obviously. It is, but you got to – all right, so here – I'm looking them up here. Bands from Portland. Modest uh, Mouse. The Dandy Warhols. <laughs> all right. The, Mo- King, the Kingsmen, the Decembers. Modest Mouse. The Decembers. Really? The, the Decemberist, I believe is Decemberist, the Decemberist, yeah. correct. Yeah, yes. that band's all right. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Modest Mouse is okay, but it's all like really soft music. Everclear? Uh, oh, I like Everclear. Yeah, She and Him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bl- Port- Blitzen Trapper. Portugal the Man is from there. That's a good, that's a good oh, band. Oh, they're great. Yeah. All right. All right. So, we, yeah, we got some. Maybe you, you've got a bunch got of a options couple. to choose from. That could be one of your fir- first bills is changing that. Um, let's, well. Thank God uh, Portland's not in my district, or else we'd never win. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, so, what is the state song of Oregon? Uh, would, yeah, I, no one knows. I know, I know ours at least. I at least know that one. It's, oh, it's Sl- Georgia on my mind because it's Ray Charles. Oh so. yeah, Slater Kenny's from uh, Portland. I forgot about that. You know who that is right? The woman from Portlandia. Yes, her oh, band. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 her yeah. band. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, the state song of Oregon is "Oregon, My Oregon." was adopted as the official Oregon State song in 1927. Uh, the music was written by Henry B. Murtaugh. Huh. You don't say. Never heard that song. I feel, okay. like, I feel that, like I could have just guessed that one. Yeah, is that, is that Danny <laughs> Oregon Glover? Oregon by Oregon. It's Danny Glover, right? It is. It's Danny Murtaugh Glover, yeah. From, uh, Murtaugh Lethal sang Weapon. it. Murtaugh sang it. Yeah, the only, one I, the only reason I know George's is because it was Ray Charles, and it's super easy, you know? So whenever you, whenever you drive into the state, it says, thank you for having George on your mind or something like that, so. You know, well, uh, you're welcome for that. What about making? Um, my, I know everybody's tearing down statues. Can I ask you to erect one in Oregon? Um, I want a, ooh. I want a huge Steve Pre Prefontaine statue. Oh yeah, that would be dope. I lost a bet to Dan last year yep. over. Uh, I dare say there already is one in uh, Coos Bay where he's from. I'm pretty sure there's a Steve P. Prefontaine uh, statue either. Coos Bay or Eugene? Let's put one on every street corner. What if we Oregon. did a? What if we did a statue of just the mustache? Oh, it's just like great. a giant fucking no face, no body, just a Ooh, giant mustache. It'd be great. Uh, my beloved Ohio State University is playing at Oregon the second game of the year this year. If it's if they still play college football, mm-hmm. you coming out, man? I'd, I'd love to. They're look the, the, pack, the whole West, the Pac the the pack pack twelve, 12 is not real. That that isn't a football conference. <laughs> it's definitely not. But it, it's weird because you know they initially mm-hmm. announced kids weren't weren't coming back to school, mm-hmm. and we're not sure if we're going to play football, and so. Um, I don't know what Oregon's going to do specifically, uh, but I, it wouldn't shock me if that game got canceled, to be honest with you. It wouldn't shock me either. Yeah, um, because, you know, why have any fun? Let's let China win and uh, we can all stay covered up in our mask and, and live in our houses with our parents and, and figure it yeah, out. Yeah, remember, remember after 9-11 when uh, it was uh, don't let if, – if you stay at home and don't go shopping. Don't let the terrorists like that, win, letting yeah. The- yeah. yeah. Whatever happened to that? Don't I know. Let, don't let Corona win. I know. I don't know. Come I've on, been people. I've been making out with people in public this whole time. Yep. Dudes, a lot chicks, of dudes, mostly dudes. A lot of dudes. Because you can't just go up and make out with a chick. You get that. You get me too for that. But mm-hmm. if you just go start, I'm a straight dude. If I just go make out with a with a dude, that's like, oh, that's a joke. That's not real. Yeah. I wasn't actually trying to sexually harass him. We're just being weird. Uh, obviously. Yeah. And then because so, you were you were singing Oregon. 
my Oregon. Is that how the song goes? I believe so. That's off the cuff, but if <laughs> it's definitely recording quality. So if you want to go ahead and post it on iTunes, you can. I don't Dan. think that's accurate. Now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is <clears> someone who has inspired you or helped you become the man you are today. Maybe somebody who's helped you uh, on this congressional run so far. Huh. Well, I, I'm sure it sounds corny, but my family, I think, is very responsible for how I turned out, for better or for worse. And uh, also, there's this uh, this guy I know named uh, Stan Kohlmeyer, who uh, really kind of got me into shooting and was a big part of why I uh, joined the military in the first place. He was a uh, sniper in Vietnam and just an all-around really cool dude. So uh, I think if I wasn't in the military and didn't uh, have the experiences that I had before the terrorist attack. I don't think the terrorist attack would have gone so well, and I don't think uh, I would be where I'm at right now. Man, that's awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, well, Alec, we're, we're certainly looking forward to November 3rd. Mm-hmm. We hope you win. Tell everybody once again where they can go and donate <laughs> and, uh, and help you with your campaign. Sure, yeah. alec for oregoncom A-L-E-K-F-O-R, Oregon.com, or Alex Carlottis on Facebook. Shoot us an email. Uh, give us a call or a Facebook message. We appreciate it. That's awesome, man. I love those shirts, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We're uh, going to have them on the store pretty soon. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out. Boom. Well, join us after you win because I, I think you are going to win, actually. Um, Roster Damas, I'm not wrong very often. I think you're going to win this one, for real. I, and I think it's going to be a really, really cool moment for uh, all the Drink and Bro community because, you know, you've been on the show three or four times. Everybody loves you, and, uh, and we're all rooting for you here. So uh, from the Drink and Bros to you, man, uh, please bring this one home on, in November. That'd be great. I'll give it my best shot, and so will my Ross. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. For Alex Scarlatos, D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>